in this video I'm going to talk about how client and server communication takes place for web applications which is generally done through HTTP messages going through this video will would help you build an understanding for API automation and how the different moving pieces in ABI automation work together. If you want to read about the difference between UI and API automation and the importance of API automation, I'm adding a few links in the description of this video. So let's get started. So before we start with discussing how HTTP messages work, I'd like to give an analogy of how this would work with Bob sending a letter to his friend Mike compared to how an email would be sent to Mike. Just to illustrate that both the processes are pretty much the same except for the technology behind them. So when Bob is sending a letter to Mike, he would write up the letter, drop it off at the post office with the address for, for where it has to be delivered and the post office would add another it would add some more details to that packet let's let's say and it would send it off to Mike's address where Mike receives it with an email again once Bob has drafted his email he would just click the send button and the mail client here would send off this email to the server with some additional data on top of it explaining where this has to be routed and data keeps on adding up on top of the original email and by that time it receives the receiver end the extra detail that was added will be removed so it's pretty much in essence the same process the way a letter would be sent it's just that the different layers behind the email are not visible to the end user so when we say data is added by the post office what does that mean so again looking closely here the address to where it's to be sent the postal address the priority of the mail probably and whom it's from so those might be the real basic details which they might be adding perhaps there might be more but this is this should be the essence and when we look at the email it would have similar data to it which is what we are going to talk about in detail so we have the email body and then on top of it which was the original email the mail client would be adding some details like what is the message type and what is the message header so in the header it would include some more details about the message and about transmitting it and once it receives, once Mike receives the email at the other end, all this additional detail with the message type and header would be removed. So which is why we don't see it, but it's happening behind the scene. So now let's have a closer look at the API headers that we just saw. Now the request method corresponds to different message types that are available for any HTTP message. The most common ones are a POST message and a GET message. A POST message meaning some information has to be sent to the server and a GET message meaning that just some information is required to be sent f by the server for the client to consume. Message headers vary from application to application and so for instance in our example we can say if we are talking about a 
web application where a user has logged in so the session id might be something which is which would most commonly go into the message header the body here in our case if again if we are talking about a web application so the body might include the username and the password so whatever information we are sending could be in the body now looking closely at each of the different sections here the request method again um, we talked about get and post messages so again get being where we just need some data from the server for instance as soon as a user logs in or tries to access the application a get message would be sent which would be just saying that such and such client is requesting such and such page and that would be a get message to which the server side application would respond with an HTTP page sending over the page which the email which the browser can display a post message however would be where we are the client is not just asking for something but it's it's also sending some information back again a good example would be for instance um, if we just filled out a form on an application so when we send when we click send or submit the form so the browser or the client side would gather all the data that we've added and send it back to the server. So that would be a post message. Both of them be, are of different types right from the start so that the server knows how to process each of these. Now the next section would be the message headers. Apart from just the type of the message a post or get there is some a lot of basic information which the server would would need to digest and understand the message it's receiving and what response it has to send back for instance some mail clients can consume information in a certain format like XML some clients require an XML format some clients might require a JSON format or the server side might be sending a slightly different page for a Safari browser it might be sending a slightly different page for a Chrome browser so all of this information about what the client is expecting and any details about the data it is sending all of that would be part of the message header so the final section is the body of our message now the body includes any information that has to be sent to the server side which could be for any reason it could be for storage of that information in the database it could be for validation of the information being sent is correct it could be any other processing could be done on it by the server side so any information that has to be sent back to the server would be in the body. Now, there are two very common data formats that are used for sending data. One of them is XML and the other one is JSON. Um, and both of these are, JSON is relatively newer and it's JavaScript based and XML has been there for a very long time. Now we just talked about HTTP requests. Now, a re so the first time we are sending a message to the server, it would be a request. Now, against each request, the server is bound to send a response back saying, I, I received this message and acknowledging if the data in there was understood by the server or if it found any inf error there for instance if we send something and the server side is not able to understand that part it would send an error response saying that this because of this data or this was the error due to which i was not able to process this in case it has processed it it would send okay uh, I was able to process the information and any valid any response that it has to send back to the 
client side would be added to it so again if this were a get message that we were sending as an HTTP request so the response of a get message would be an HTML page in our example where we said the first time we are opening an application or opening a web page the response HTTP response would be the web page itself and that would be in the part of the body of the HTTP response the way and the construction of an HTTP response is exactly the same way as an HTTP request is done now elaborating a little further on the request and response in the case where Bob was sending an email back to the email example as soon as Bob sends the email the email client here is going to create an HTTP request it could be different uh, different mail clients using different protocols but generalizing here so and this request is going to be sent to the desired server and once this is received by the server it would generate an HTTP response saying that the email has been sent to the requested person and so that's how you get in, in in your email you can configure it to have a notification when the email is received and when the email is read so that's how you get those notifications for an HTTP so you get a response from the server side saying that hey I was able to transfer or transmit this message to, to the desired recipient and that's what you get a response Similarly, if this were a web application, back to where we were sending, submitting a form on a web page. Now, as soon as we click send on the form, it would gather all that data and generate an HTTP request, which would send that information back to the server. The server is going to process that information. And when it's, once it's able to process it, it's going to generate a response saying that okay your form has been so you might get a message on your browser saying the form has been saved successfully right so that's when you are getting the HTTP response from the server behind the scene which would again be an HTTP message with a message type with a message header and a message body received by the browser and that's when you get the message so the reason for going through all the HTTP request and response is actually this is how we are going to do API testing. So in our example here, the dark blue portion where Bob is sending the email, when we are doing automation from the UI level, we are actually testing on the browser. But when we are doing an API automation, we are not exactly interacting with the browser itself rather the output that the browser is creating which is this HTTP request we generate the request itself and we learn how the browser is supposed to generate the request and we send that request ourselves and the way we validate is when we get the HTTP response back we just ensure whatever values we were expecting is what we are receiving so now that we have an understanding of, of how an HTTP request and HTTP response works it would be easier when we talk about API testing and how these different pieces fit together in the whole big picture thank you for watching if this video was helpful don't forget to subscribe to the channel. See you next time.